to show you what happened in the last 12 months and where the Typo 3 ecosystem is heading. Enjoy it. So, Matt, are you searching for your cable? Yeah, I'm searching now for the cable for the computer. Take this. It's technology. It's spooky. It's you. It's a lot of technology, and we don't have a clue about tech. So. Neuland. <laughs> so something happened to my screen. Let's go. <laughs> Morning. <Whoa. laughs> yeah, you're, you're all tired of clapping, right? Makes sense. Kick it off. Probably there should be sound, so. Right, so let's see if this works. It does. Hi. Um, so for those who don't know, um, I'm Matthias Schreiber. I'm a CEO of uh, newly founded Type 3 Inc. Um, that's the Twitter handle. Uh, you'll kind of find me all over the web. Um, I just continue to my colleague. Yeah, uh, my name is Fabian Stein. I'm the leader of the Type 3 marketing team and the Type 3 design team. And uh, yeah, in reason for this, I want to talk about uh, what's going on with uh, Type 3 branding and so on. And I just realized we don't have speaker notes, so this is going to be interesting because we actually learned this keynote like yesterday. Um, so bear with us. So um, what we want to talk about is a bit more on the, on the meta level. So the main question for us in marketing and in product development is what is Type 3? So what defines Type 3 as a brand, as a product, as a community? And what we can clearly say is that we have a huge community um, and we get feedback all the time that it's more of a friendly community when compared to other open source communities where tone is like tough <laughs> most of the time. So we try to be polite as well. But one thing that we should never forget in the end is that we also all run businesses in one way or another. Because, you know, we got to pay bills, we got to pay the rent, all this kind of stuff. And the, the thing is that we need to connect these two things. So business sounds like, you know, like a bad thing to a lot of people, but if we can get into business while still keeping up the community values, right? So being, being honest, being uh, nice to people, being helpful, being inspiring, I think this is what truly sets Type 3 apart from other systems, vendors, etc. So, the main question is how we define ourselves. And this is basically a question everybody has to ask him or herself. So, what do we think when we do something in Type 3, when we get involved in teams, when we attend a conference like this? Um, so, as we said earlier, we can truly say that Type 3 is a community-driven project most of the time. Um, there are people that define themselves, you know, like very business focused. Unfortunately, this, this was like the only image we got. We wanted to have like a really nasty CEO kind of thing going on, right? So the person you immediately hate. Um, <laughs> but we thought that it, you know, like the truth might be somewhere in the middle, right? So um, I know we have a couple of people here in suits. Everybody's suited up, that's cool. Um, we also have people wearing shirts, we also have hybrids. Um, <laughs> um, so this is basically where we think where, where the line is how Type 3 works as, as a whole in general. So the thing is, how does 
these, how does that work, like at all, right? So how do open source communities work in general? So the main thing is, is scratching your own itch. Um, you might know that term, what it's about is you want something solved, you solve it, right? You have a problem or a bug that's annoying you, you simply solve it. And this is something that sets apart open source software from basically any proprietary software, because imagine you had like a bug in your, I don't know, imaginary CMS, let's call it site dot. <laughs> um, <laughs> And you, you know, you couldn't fix it. There's no way, so you would have to call support and they'll say, yeah, we got it on the agenda. Uh, we might fix it later. And as we all know in software development, later equals never, right? Um, so this is something truly remarkable about open source in general. Um, so you see a problem, you get into it and you solve it. And this is, this is, you know, a lot of times people in open source go like, yeah, the core team told me I should solve it myself. If you think about it, how awesome this is that you are capable of solving the problem. This is something truly remarkable that we should never forget about. Um, another cool thing is what we can see is that people in open source work a lot more passionately than, you know, like, employed people in a company that try to do like the nine to five thing. Um, if I think about this, it, I don't know who's ever attended a code sprint. Somebody here ever attended a code sprint? A couple of people. So those who don't know, if you attend a code sprint, you might need like another week of holiday after that um, because it's basically 7 a.m. to 4 a.m., four days in a row, right? But people love it and people, you know, they're just having fun with it and it's passion. Um, the other cool thing is that because you get together with people that share the same passion as you do, you basically get inspired by what they do. And I can tell from a personal experience that within my time with Type 3, I have learned so much about coding, about human interaction. Um, not always perfectly, by the way. Um, <laughs> And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so inspiring to be part of any of the Type of 3 teams, and this doesn't necessarily just translate to the coding part, right? So if you go to the marketing team, you can basically learn so much and be inspired by so, so many things. And the awesome thing is that in the end, you can also just inspire others. So you become that person that inspires somebody else. Um, and this is a feeling that's truly hard to describe. It's just, it's incredible. <laughs> um, all right, so the main claim is, and this is something that I want everybody to embrace truly, don't wait for anyone around you to act, right? Be that someone. There's no sense of permission that you need to, you know, like collect. There's no checklist of things you need to achieve first before you are allowed or entitled to things. If you see something and you want to act, just do it. Talk to the right people. Um, and it's a truly, truly inspiring uh, experience for everyone. I can just uh, recommend that. <laughs> All right, so um, let, let's do a quick run about uh, Type 3 7, the version we released basically during last year's conference. Um, just to give you a quick heads up, there won't be a release this conference <laughs> because we got an 18 month release cycle, so that kind of didn't add up. But we got some pretty cool stuff to show you already. Um, so let's talk about what happened. Uh, I'll give you a short overview. So we wanted to do a recap of what we wanted to achieve with Type 3 and with the change in development. Then we want to show you what really happened after that, because you know, like, plans. Um, and then in the end, I want to just give you some feedback, what people said from the outside, now that we're another 12 months in. So what we wanted to happen in CMS 7 was we wanted to give the system a more fresh look, right? I don't know, who, who's ever talked to a client that said like, that looks old? <laughs> <laughs> this didn't happen in, time in CMS 7 yet. <laughs> and we hope to be here for another 20 years, because by the way, I think it's next month that Type 3 is 20 years old. Did you know that? Another thing is that we figured, because we, we always had this kind of thing going on that people say, it's very developer-oriented. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was, right? Um, but in the end, we wanted to, to supply more tools for editors for their daily work. Um, another thing that we wanted to do, and this is something from a development perspective which is really, really tricky, we wanted to be 100% reliable on release cycles because we figured that it's, our, it's basically our duty so you can run your businesses on a tight schedule and you know what's going to happen when. Um, and in the end we wanted a faster system because, hey, why not? Um, so I, I, I've never seen a client complain about his website loading too fast. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, the funny thing is you're laughing now, but when we did the switch to PHP 7, we actually had to slow down a certain component of the Type 3 core because PHP was delivering the data too fast. <laughs> so the JavaScripts in the front end were just like, Ooh. <laughs> So, um, but we figured this out by now, so that works. All right, so, um, and in the end, we wanted to have like a more modern code base because everybody was like, it's like, it's old, <laughs> like, old, you know, we, if you think about it, we still have components in the Type 3 core that age back 20 years in software development, right? Let that sink in for a minute. Um, so we're basically talking like Windows 95. Um, and they still work, funny enough. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> It's totally stable. 50% of all ATM machines run Windows 2000. <laughs> And that's your money. <laughs> so, um, so what really happened in the end is um, that we built um, wrong slides, by the way. Um, so, <laughs> no, I was kidding. Um, so the thing is that we, we gave editors the chance to manip uh, manipulate, well, early morning, um, <laughs> images in a better way than before. And we're not done with that. So in the next, um, the release cycle of Type 3 CMS, you will be able to define uh, certain focus points for your images for a responsive viewport. Um, you will be able to art direct images for different viewports. So your editors can choose not only a different part of the image for a different viewport. Yeah, yeah, let me finish, then you can clap that. Um, <laughs> But you will be also able to exchange the image because you have to rethink, right? So like, like things like that work on a feed basis need totally different content than your desktop website. So you now will be able to like exchange the image entirely. There you go. We got forms. Who doesn't like forms? Um, but um, we now have a, a, uh, a very, very dedicated team um, of developers who are working on a on, um, form wizard, um, which basically works like, who knows Delphi? <sighs> wow, we're old, right? Um, <laughs> So, but you know these kind of things, right? Where you drag and drop stuff and then you got this inspector panel on the right and you can just click it. And we got this for forms. And it does not only create like stupid send an email forms, but it's capable of, of uh, putting stuff against different APIs, putting stuff in the database, like creating orders and stuff. And all this from a very intuitive interface. This is being built as we speak. So we've taken what we, what we improved in, in CMS7 and we're taking it even beyond that. Um, then another cool thing is that we have uh, the backend working on tablet computers, which was a frequent request because if you spend a lot of time at the airports like I do, you see less people with notebooks and more people with tablets or f f what's it called, the thing in between phablets, right? It's, 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 like, it's like too huge to call someone, but too small to read stuff properly. I don't... Um, and I think the most important thing is we delivered this thing on time. And um, if we take a look at other open source projects that take like... I mean, we, we had the 6.2 release was delayed by, I think, eight months. There's a huge content management system that delayed their release for like four years. Um, and we figured that we simply deliver everything on time so you can plan ahead with your clients. And this is also about building trust in the product and also in your company. Right? And we figure that we need to deliver that so you can work with this. All right, yeah, that's, that's uh, the other cool thing is that we have measured an up to four times speed increase. So um, we, have, we, we have websites running 
so fast that people were basically arguing, yeah, I can, I can do that with my system as well. I got varnish. And we were like, yeah, but we don't. <laughs> and if we want to talk performance, you always need to talk system performance, right? Before you can cache anything, you know, but that's cheating. Um, and the cool thing is that, that we didn't have a single performance increasing patch, right? It's just from cleaning up the code base. So the code is still very structured, very modern, but it gets faster. So that's something truly incredible. Um, all right. So the last thing is we had a lot of talks with editors. So I've, I've just come back from, I think it was 12 agency meetup days in total. 11. 11. A dozen, that sounds better. Um, and um, so the feedback that we got is that basically editors love it. They truly love working with the system. And this is something we haven't heard for quite a while <laughs> with Type 3. Um, another thing that we realize is that basically demand for the system picks up. Um, and while we all have to agree that the German speaking market is basically well off, um, we see demand growing in the UK in the US, in Italy, in Greece, in India. So this is why we kind of think we did, we did a good job with that. So we also increase market share. And who doesn't love the market share discussions? Right? So WordPress runs, what, 99% of the web or something? Uh, we had this discussion in Italy, in uh, Bologna, and I simply came up with the term, well, Lamborghini has like 1% market share. So what? <laughs> um, and the, another cool thing is that we get new developers attracted to the system, um, mainly because we also moved all our support activity to Stack Overflow to become more visible. Uh, within the Type of 3 uh, Inc., we plan to employ full-time supporters who will only monitor Stack Overflow. So imagine you would start out with a new system you have no clue about. And you know you can ask a question and you get feedback within 24 hours that's high quality and valid. So this is something where we kind of change the game in the open source world a bit because we take our stakeholders seriously. Right. And the other cool thing is that there's basically a line missing is that uh, industry heavyweights start approaching us. So um, you might know that we do quite a lot of stuff with, uh, with the Microsoft people. And I think Andreas is not here yet. Um, but what's even better is that, you know, when, when we did this entire cloud hosting Azure thing with Microsoft, suddenly people started calling. We're like, hey, I'm with Amazon. <laughs> Can we have a talk? <laughs> Um, and I was in, in Nuremberg, and there was, there was uh, Ryan from Google, who also was like, yeah, this, uh, we've seen you do stuff with Microsoft, so <laughs> let's do some stuff together. Um, and there's, there's also interesting spin-offs from that. So we have the people from Platform SH, like in row two, um, and you can, yeah, exactly. Um, and um, what you can do is outside at the booth, you can basically pick up like a, like a it's a voucher, right? Yeah. Perfect. Just like on the website? <laughs> Perfect. Um, and um, Robert's going to show what it can actually do um, tomorrow at 10-ish, something around that. Um, it's truly interesting to take a look at what this does because it will change the way how you develop. This is, this is something cool. It's not necessarily about hosting, so, um, but take a look at that. It's incredible. All right, so um, I just have a small part about product development. So how do we develop products? And this is a quote which I find truly remarkable, which is, people will choose the software they trust. And if you let that sink in for a second, this is like, it makes sense, right? So it's, it's like buying a car. You take a look at the car, you know, and it's rusty and it squeaks all the time and, you know, it's oil drilling out. You go like, let's go on the highway with that. <laughs> So um, this is why we want to we, we achieve as much trust in the product as humanly possible. Um, yeah, right, that was that slide, by the way. <laughs> so the other thing that we do in product development is we're guessing. <laughs> and when we ask people what they need, the result is that we can do educated guesses <laughs> because that's how product development works, right? Um, but what we do is that we want to work with the industry, and that's basically 
everybody in the room to get an idea where digital business is heading, right? Because we can, we can guess, and if we're lucky, we guess right, um, but we need more feedback with that. Um, this is basically the same stuff that I want to work with the clients um, to get an idea what clients in the outside world need. Because if you ask like a digital agency what they need, you get a very niche kind of answer to that. Like, I need APIs for this and this and that. But if you talk to the client, they have to solve totally different problems. And we want to become this, you know, like connection in the middle where we can, where we can give valuable feedback in both directions. Um, and then in the end, what we try all the time is predicting the future. I've tried with, uh, with the lottery, it does not work. Um, but what we can do is that we try to get an idea where digital business is headed, and in the end also not just predict it, but also shape it. Right? And this is where we need all your feedback. It's incredibly important that you share what you need in your daily business, and also what you think you will need in the next five to 10 years. Because you know, like development cycles and stuff, <laughs> It takes a while. Um, and in the end, we had this in Amsterdam also, we figure that as, as the product development team, it's our duty to help you create digital value for your clients. Because this will create trust in you as an agency and the product as a whole. Um, and this is basically what it's all about, right? We went into digital business to create value. And value doesn't necessarily mean money, right? It's just about creating things that the, the agencies like, the, the clients like, and the, the, the clients of the clients like, right? Because this is why we're in digital business. All right, so now I'll head over to marketing. Give him some hands, he's like tired. Thank you. Yeah, as, the, okay. as we know, um, we have a nice product, but somehow, uh, yeah, we want to get more people in, more clients in, and uh, increase the market share even a bit more, even if we are the 1% Lamborghini. Um, and in reason to that, um, the marketing team together with the, the uh, GmbH has thought a lot about this um, type of three brand branding stuff. Like we heard from Mattis before, it's um, the question, how we define ourselves and the question how we can strength the, uh, strength the brand to really working with and um, why it's so important to have this strong brand. Maybe you recognized um, two years ago, I think, in the end of 2014, the design team started to build up a style guide. So that was the first thing to build a visual identity. But the longer we work with and uh, the more we work together with the GmbH, we see that we need a strong brand together and somehow a, a way of telling what we are doing. Um, there's uh, this quote uh, from Oscar Wilde, so it's a um, bit older than 20 years. Um, but still true. But still true. Nowadays people know the price of everything and the value of nothing. And that's actually a point. That's the point where we uh, jump in and where uh, you can help us together with the marketing team. We have um, an example for that. Yeah? You see um, there's water, so it's a very easy product. Most of you will use it. Um, except e e except for, uh, for Mattis, because he's just drinking energy drinks and never uh, water. <laughs> I shower in Red Bull, so that's what he kind of thinks, right? <laughs> okay, so we have the water from the tap, what is about uh, two cents. And uh, then we have this water from tap in fancy bottles, um, what's around an euro, and we have this water from tap in more fancy bottles, um, what's around 15 euros. It's so still water, <laughs> right? So we still have the question, okay, what's this brand about? What, what we want to tell with our brand and where we want to get value with? Um, one example, of course, uh, for that uh, is Red Bull. They are doing that really nice. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's this <Holy>. energy. <laughs> so they have, they say, okay, we don't have lemonade, we do 
pure uh, liquid adrenaline and um, that's the reason why they do all this adrenaline driven events and stuff and every time you see Red Bull on whatever kind of car, aeroplane, it's somehow something to do with adrenaline. We have a claim as well and it's inspiring people to share and it's actually a really strong claim. A lot of you have worked with it and uh, I uh, get a lot of good feedback with that. But we have to fill it with life and we have to work on that to fill it with life all the time and we have to fill it in both directions, in the business direction and in the community direction. So what we are doing um, from now on and the next uh, years and of course like every brand process it's a never stopping process. We have the Type of 3 association that holds the brand and now the Type of 3 marketing team and the Type of 3 and GmbH um, are working together on this brand and on the idea and on the vision to that. And um, yeah. <laughs> and somehow up there there should be a, a brand agency because um, we will work together with a brand agency that helps us and where we need all of you to work with us together and the brand agency to get a nice process and uh, get a stronger brand for Type 3. But of course, we not uh, was the last year lazy and uh, crying that we have to work so much. So what we built is for example a style guide for the visual identity. We um, created first prints and uh, concepts for it. Maybe you've seen the first flyers or uh, you was at the AMDs where I show some of them. And um, what was really a huge project for us is the type3.com for decision makers. So we have now an, an easier way to go for decision makers to get their information. And we did a lot more nice stuff together with the GmbH and the marketing team. For example, we've made these AMDs. So we were to 11 cities, meet uh, you, agencies, um, people that give their opinion to us and people that are helping us. And um, what we've done as well, oh. yeah, um, we've made a video because uh, what we learned from the AMDs last year um, was that they need Agencies need an easier access for new people to come to Type 3. So what we made is uh, an image uh, video for decision makers that is meant to be really the first touch. So I uh, showed it the first time on the uh, Dev Days this year and I showed the video and uh, all people in the room were like, hey, yeah, no, I know all this information. Yeah, that's right, that's totally the plan, but the information is not for you, but the information is for your clients or people that are coming to the Type of 3 com website and say, ah, I've heard Type of 3 somewhere, I think it's a CMS, but what they are actually doing. So probably uh, press the space. Hey there. Hello. Have you ever wondered, what is Typo 3? Well, if you throw things like text, images, or videos in it, it spits out shiny websites, or apps, or insanely complex intranet systems. Or you could also use to do things we didn't even think about ourselves. For example, if a passenger of an AIDA cruise ship turns on his or her TV set, they are inherently using a media player running Typo 3. In short, if you need to manage and output content, Typo 3 is for you. You can start small and grow fast. Typo 3 won't let you down. No matter if you're working as a one-man show, a rapidly growing startup, or with a lot of other people at the same time, like the University of Vienna. But Typo 3 is more than just a CMS. It's a strong community of industry professionals. We're not driven by profit. We're driven by conviction. We bring people, companies and organizations together that share a common goal. And that is to make the best CMS available today. Typo 3. Inspiring people to share. Thank you.
Actually, the main credit for this uh, has to go to uh, Benny Muck and the core team that helped us a lot with uh, getting all the information together and get this clear to explain that to Studio Flocks, where they actually made this video and uh, helped us to build it. This is not animated, right? This is like paper cut for real. <laughs> yeah. So we will um, do at least uh, two mod more videos in the next time with that. Um, one is around more the product thingy, like, um, okay, why you want to use uh, Type of 3. And uh, the second video is about the organizational structure, because like Matt said before, um, you want to use a software that you trust and for trusting a software, of course, it's important to know how it's organized, where they get their money from and why I should trust this, that the next 20 years will be at least as nice as the first 20 years. Okay, so what we will deliver in the marketing team and in the design team is a branding and communication concept. Um, we will help on the uh, working with the community, like um, this year it starts really working good that um, other teams ask us and help. we help them to communicate their stuff. And of course we want to work really uh, hardly with the um, Type of 3, GmbH, and closely. Uh, closely. <laughs> and, and the, uh, <laughs> sorry. And um, what I have to say uh, from, from my perspective in the moment, it's working really nice. It's really um, helping us a lot that we are able to thinking about uh, stuff and creating stuff and um, on the one hand we have the GmbH with communicating their products and on the other hand products like the type3.com would never have done without the GmbH because the marketing team and the design team are really nice teams but their programming skills are not the best actually. <laughs> Okay, so um, one, 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 one tiny fraction of this, what we aim for with Type 3 is basically how the market works, right? But as you can see, is that we have added a little S to that because it's about markets, right? So a lot of people approach us in the core team and go like, why do you build something like Doctrine into the core? Just fix X base. Um, the thing is, the important that, thing is just yeah, I I exactly. Like, what can take so long? <laughs> um, so the the main point is that um, we want to open up new markets to you, right? So that's the important part of our strategy, because um, we figured, you know, a lot of people came up and were like, you know, like the cake isn't big enough anymore, and I was just like, let's bring more cake. <laughs> um, so the first thing I wanted to give you something that just to think about, compare yourself wisely to your competition, right? So it's like, it's like if you, if you want to open up a bakery in a street that's full of bakeries, right? That wouldn't be like the smartest of ideas. So um, we, we, we think that it needs, you know, if, if you start comparing yourself to like low level, projects, low-level software, you know, easy things, you will never escape that. So compare yourself to the big players. Uh, Olivier always has this nice quote, which is like, don't dress like the person you are, dress like the person you want to be, right? And this basically applies to your business as well. Um, so we also figured, you know, we, we, with Type of 3, we want to help you escape your niche. Right? Because you know, there's a lot of people doing the same stuff and what we want to uh, allow you is to get access to markets that you could not touch before. Um, and uh, this, is, this is something that we will be getting onto over the next couple of days as well. Um, and in the end, of course, building market share, right? because everybody wants market share. Alternatively, Google Trends. Um, <laughs> when nobody really cares about what Google Trends is about, but um, right. So this is what we try to achieve. And the cool thing is that we get we, we get like people attracted from the U.S., from the U.K. Um, that were you know like traditionally not that fond of Type of Three up until now, but now it seems like they can no longer escape our brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> 
So um, the main question is, and this is basically where, where Fabian and I work on a, 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 a tag team basis. So the thing is people always, always go like, the core team decided things I didn't like, or the marketing team decided things I didn't like, or insert random team name here, didn't, de uh, didn't decide as I like it to be. Go become part of the team, right? It's so simple. <laughs> Yeah, we, we got a lot of sprints. So we already mentioned code sprints. This is something I definitely do not recommend for managers. Um, <laughs> it's tough, but it's fun. <laughs> but uh, what I can recommend is send your developers to code sprints. They will learn so much that it's basically a no-brainer to send people to these events. The other cool thing is it doesn't cost you a dime, right? because the core team pays travel and accommodation for all code sprint participants. And by now we even book the hotels. <laughs> and we have, to, if Anya's in a good mood and has some time, she even books the flights and the trains <laughs> for people, right? So it's really, it's, it's a no-brain decision. All you need to do from a management perspective is give your developers time to attend this. Please, please don't make them take a holiday, okay? They get trained, they, add to your business value, just, you know, like, th think of it as free training, <laughs> right? So if you send your developer to a training, or two-day training, you don't tell them, oh, you know, remember to take these two days off. <laughs> um, and basically the same goes for marketing sprints. Uh, this is where Fabian can actually tell a lot more about. Uh, yeah, we have the uh, next marketing sprint from uh, 16th to 18th of November, so, uh, you're very welcome there. Actually, that is for managers. So um, if you want to attend somewhere and you are sad that you can't go to Code Sprint, you can come to us. Um, we need all kind of people. And uh, the important thing um, of the marketing sprints, and that's what actually I try to tell everywhere and tell everybody, um, if you are interested in communicating around Type 3, you're very welcome. You don't have to be the best designer in the world or the uh, best marketeer or whatever. Actually, um, the last market sprint, I really get um, uh, people send me their uh, CVs. Like, okay, can I attend? I have done something like that. And I, okay, no, just come and feel free and um, we want you with us and have a good time. By taking a look at your CV, we saw you had, you studied four years after that you worked in the, in the industry for another four years, so we can safely assume you are eight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's no limit to this, right? Just, just attend, get in contact uh, with, uh, with us. We're at the event all the time, so if you want to attend anything, we need that help, right? And we all together can make Type of 3 grow faster and stronger than before. And that was it, right? Uh, Thanks. So. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Questions? Thank you. <laughs> Originally, we had like a question slide. Are there questions? Uh, I hope not, because we're a little bit late. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's, let's take just this one question. Can you send it on videotape like no, 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 no. <laughs> You can buy it from me for now. <laughs> um, to be honest, we wanted to have it live by this date, but we figured that it made more sense to invest like a couple of more weeks so we get like, like subtitle transcripts for it. Because in a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, public places like, you know, like um, in the public sector, right? So, so uh, governments and stuff, you don't have audio on the PC. So we figured just seeing something animated doesn't make too much sense. Plus we wanted it to be able to be translatable. Um, and Jörg, who is around here, hopefully somewhere, um, knows the current status on this. So it won't be too long, just give us a couple more days because we need to translate things, but it will be public. That means uh, On the Type of 3, come. 
On, well, basically on Typo 3 com we can also supply like full res downloads, uh, transcripts if you want to translate it yourself. Um, we even extracted the audio tracks, so, 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 so the spoken word from the music. So if anyone's interested in translating it, you know, like, like with a speaker, that's possible. This is what we thought about as well, so that we can do more international stuff. All right. Thank you, Mattis. Thank you, Fabian.